the biggest story to me right now is the Pelicans and Zion Williamson. They're on a hot streak. They're on a burner. They're on a burner. What do you think after these uh, these two big weekend wins over Phoenix? There's a swag that this team has. There's a there's a competitiveness. I thought the turnaround after pretty much a blowout win on Friday, then the Zion 360 dunk, which we'll get to in a second, and the aftermath of that. For them to come around, turn around Sunday, and I, I know you know they're they're not with Brandon Ingram and the Suns didn't have Booker, but to win again against a really good Phoenix Suns team was really impressive. And and to do it in the way that they did in overtime, Zion, of course, dominating again. Zion, by the way, in this seven-game win streak, averaging 30 points, nine rebounds, five assists, 1.6 steals, 1.1 blocks, 67% from the field. He's playing like an all-NBA player. This is something, there's a switch, though, Tommy. And Stan Van Gundy figured this out in his uh, season with Zion. And obviously, Zion set out last year. Point Zion. Point Zion has really been the difference and Second Spectrum has some amazing stats on this. So in Zion's first 13 games, he averaged 11.1 drives per game. In the last eight, he's averaging 19 drives a game. He's brought the ball up 158 possessions in the last seven games. His first 14 games, only 105 times. And so I, I know because I was the beneficiary of this, and I worked this two-man action with Zion a lot, using Zion to bring the ball up and then using a smaller guard to set a ball screen on him where they don't want to switch. His handle's so good, and he's so shifty. Then all of a sudden, he's got a head of steam attacking the basket. Willie Green has done a great job of putting him in this position. Is there anything about the the personnel? We can go through a bunch of the you know really good additions they've made over the last couple of years, but is there anything about this personnel on this particular team compared to the last couple of years that's allowed this uh, this point Zion to thrive even more? I don't think there's any difference necessarily in the idea of what you're putting around Zion because, again, he had very high-level success with Stan Van Gundy playing this point Zion for the second half of the season. And I you know, he made an all-star team. Um, we weren't very good, so he didn't make all-NBA, but I think there's a strong argument that he's, he's headed in that direction this season with how good the Pelicans are. At 18 and 8, third best record in the league, second best net rating behind the Celtics, top five offense, top five defense. Let's talk about those additions, Tommy. Because David Griffin and Trajan Langdon and Swin Cash have done a great job. Uh, a lot of people two summers ago were a little befuddled when they let Lonzo go and they end up with a sign and trade. Devontae Graham came over. He hasn't been great for them in the last two years, but outside of that, trading Steven Adams for Jonas, win for both teams, but Jonas has been great for them. Uh, the trade with Portland to get C.J. McCollum and Larry Nance, that has been a great trade. Larry Nance has been a very underrated pickup for them. Getting Jose Alvarado, Trey and Herb Jones in the draft, this year's draft with Dyson Daniels. All of these guys are contributing at a very high level to winning basketball. Yeah, And so though that front office, David Griffin against Swin Cash, Trajan Langdon, They've done a fantastic job of building this team around Zion Williamson. Doesn't this feel like the maybe the ultimate example in the league right now of when you hit in the draft? <laughs> this is how you get good quick. Because, you know, we don't know yet with Dyson Daniels. I want to talk to you about him because I feel like people have not talked a ton about him so far this year, even though he was the eighth pick. But we talked a ton about we've talked a ton about Alvarado. Obviously, we've had him on the show. We've talked a ton about Herb Jones. We've talked a ton about Trey Murphy. And these guys are all contributing at a high level for them. And it basically takes the pressure off Zion and CJ and BI, who, you know, has been out since the end of November. They haven't really missed them. I mean, they won seven in a row without them. Yeah. This, I, I, this is like a broken record for me, but my entire thesis around team building is that you have to build through the draft. You need homegrown talent. You, and the draft is really hard, and particularly as we mentioned before, the 2020 draft, which was totally abnormal. Um, you know, if you go back to David Griffin's first draft with the Pelicans, they get Zion, obviously, with the first pick. He's got his little good luck charm there at the draft lottery. They end up with the first pick. They had the fourth pick as well, which they traded, and they end up with Jackson Hayes and Nikhil Alexander-Walker. And Jackson Hayes has had some moments, of course, but he's not 
really contributing on this team. And Nikhil Alexander Walker is now in Utah. By the way, shout out Nikhil. He had a great game over the weekend. I think he had ended, had a twenty seven point game. Um, so they, I don't want to say they missed because I, I, I'm still, I'm not going to write off yeah, Jackson and Nikhil. Jury's, but those guys, out. the jury's out on them. But since then, uh, yeah, to your point, it's been fantastic. These guys are all contributing. And Dyson Daniels, different game than Shaden Sharp uh, of the Portland Trailblazers, who they, those two guys were picked very close to each other. Actually, I think they were next to each back other. Back-to-back yeah, back yeah. back picks uh, in this year's draft. Impressed with both of them because they're young guys and they both have a fantastic feel for the game. So you can build the skill level. If you don't know how to play basketball, you don't know how to play basketball. That's really hard to teach. Yeah. And both these guys have excellent feel where to be spacing, cutting, finishing, passing they 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 just play the game really well don't you also think you know daniels was great defensively on booker uh when he on friday when devin played i think he was one i think he was one for nine uh when daniels was guarding him and I, we've talked a ton about uh jones we've talked a ton about jose obviously but like drafting for defense i mean this team has taken a huge jump defensively yeah. and it's it's rare for young guys to be this good defensively coming into the league this quickly it is rare. Uh, and again, I probably should have mentioned that when I talk about feel, because that's so important as well. And you need some physical gifts as well to guard a guy <laughs> like Devin Booker yeah. and hold him to one for nine shooting. Um, and speaking of defense, go back to the original guy we highlighted here, which is Zion. He's been much better I was gonna defensively this. this year. More engaged, better positioning. Uh, the effort's been better. We've seen a number of these highlight blocks where he comes over from the weak side. Um, he's getting steals. He's active. Uh, credit to him. I have a good stat about this. I love to hear Andrew, it. Andrew Lopez covers the team for ESPN. He wrote about Zion's defense. He said he's currently holding opponents to 37.4% shooting as a contesting defender, a mark that ranks fifth among players contesting 10 shots per game or more. So that's pretty significant for a guy like this to make this jump. When this yeah. was clearly the... It was clearly the Weak spot in his game, probably coming into this year, was the question mark with him. We we always knew he could score. I brought it up. Yeah, yeah we always knew he could score, but and he's totally proved a lot of people wrong on that end. He's been really good. Where we on Old Man of the Three Things a couple episodes ago, we talked about the best teams in the West and trying to figure out the West. And New Orleans was the sort of wild card for both of us, and we kind of had them outside the top three. I I look at the West right now, and and again, we could revisit this every two weeks and our top three may change. But I look at the West right now, and I, I'm obviously bullish on the Grizzlies. I'm still bullish on the Warriors, and we're going to get to them in just a second. Um, I, I think it's safe to say the Pelicans are one of the three best teams in the West. Uh, that's not an overreach at all. Yeah. Do you, it, it feels, I mean, from my opinion, it feels like the the finals is not an unrealistic ceiling for them. I, I I, I don't think I don't think that's like a hot take <laughs> at this point. When you just watch, you've watched them all year. Either. I think it was. I think that you watched them from when they were in Brooklyn on opening night till now. Speaking of hot takes, can we can we stop with the moral outrage around shooting at the end of games? I get it, it's a personal has that, decision. Has that happened to you where where a team has done? Where, oh yeah, yeah. I remember we were playing uh, my first year in Philly when we were on our hot streak. We we won a game at Cleveland. And they were pressing and trapping and uh, down, I don't know, nine or 10. And Dario Saric had an angle to the basket and he went and shot a layup and Braun and everybody was right in front of their bench. They took umbrage with it. I just, I don't, it's so stupid. By the way, Chris Paul shot. There's multiple clips last year in the playoffs against the Pelicans, against the Dallas Mavericks, where the game is decided and they don't, the Suns don't dribble out the clock. So the campaign's comments, the moral outrage around it. Come on, man. I, I'm I'm just not with it. And and of course, last night I watched uh the it was an early game, the the rematch uh on Sunday, and you know, they're showing CP's elbow to Alvarado, which actually is what set it off the whole scuffle. It wasn't even the dunk. It was the and then everybody thought it was. Oh, there's a scuffle because he dunked. No, there's a scuffle because CP threw a cheap shot into Alvarado's neck. Yeah, I, I I thought Zion. I thought the way that Zion talked about it after the game on Friday was was um, thoughtful and made a lot of sense. It was like he didn't get to play with these guys against them last year. A, B, he's putting on a show for his 
home hometown fans. And I, I don't know. I just it, it felt like a. The, you're completely right about we need to stop with this. The unwritten rules thing is an annoying enough thing in other sports. I don't think we need to have it, you know, seep into the NBA as well. I also Zion is not an asshole. That's the other part about this. Like as a general rule, let's try not to be assholes. That's yeah. a good way to live your life. Je- Zion is not an asshole. It he's entertaining paying customers. Yeah, he wasn't for every talking. He that, just dunked for every person that bought a ticket and was in Smoothie King Center. Smoothie King Center. Yes, yes, Smoothie King SGC. Yeah, SKC. Yeah. Uh, for every paying customer, probably at the top of their list. If it wasn't the Pelicans win. The top of their list for what they hoped to see that night was an insane Zion dunk. Yep. And they got their wish. Yep. Let's just celebrate it. Let's celebrate it. The full episode of The Old Man of the Three Things is available exclusively on Amazon Music.